we're spearing off cameras. Okay. Wanna do a clap or anything? I'll do it for you. Ready? Yeah. All right. Excellent. Here we go. So, Jordan, do you want to start with the guitar and get it out of the way or not? Uh, we'll leave that maybe for later, yeah. <laughs> so let's start with um, a guy you've been watching. I understand that the entire team has been watching the junior games as much as you can, and Connor Bedard. And people are bringing this because it's one of your records. He's a Regina Pat. You are a Regina Pat. I'm curious. I know you love hockey. When you're watching this guy, what do you see? I mean, a lot of things. I mean, for one, his his skating. He reminds me of like a like a Barzell. His edge work, the way he you know floats up and down, and and uh, doesn't really lose speed when he's turning. Um, his shot, obviously, everyone sees that on the power play. Um, and he and he's doing this all at 17, which is pretty impressive. Um, you know, a lot of the guys you see dominate the World Juniors. They're 18, 19, and he's you know a 17 year old kid. I think that's the most impressive part. So. Um, I've kept tabs on him since he was uh, exceptional status and in, and then got obviously picked by the Pats, my hometown, my home team. And um, just, you know, obviously you're, you're a fan. I, I grew up watching the Pats when I was a kid and mm -hmm. went to season tickets. Had, you know, I dreamed of playing on that before with them before I even made the NHL. So, um, you know, for him to go to that that city and, and, and bring some light to it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think if I was a kid there, I'd be going to every game just to get a glimpse of watching him. So, um, you know, he's, he's, a uh, it's, it's been fun. The world junior so far has been great just watching him and, and, and not only, uh, the, the games where he's scoring lots, but then obviously he comes through against Slovakia in overtime too. So, um, you know, I look forward to the rest of it. Have you met him at all? Have you ever talked to him? No, never okay. met him, never talked to him. Um, I still have some contacts in Regina, the, the I guess you call him equipment strength uh, guy that does everything there pretty much. Greg Mary has been there for uh, he was there for a number of years before I was even there. So and he's still there and he, he says he's a great kid and um, yeah he's he's been a fun player to watch. Now I'm curious the NHLers when you're sitting with some of your teammates and you watch his games, we we just watch it and we're blown away. I'm wondering what do NHL players think when they watch him play? Um, I mean for us guys who are getting a little bit older, you're, you're thinking you know couple more of these drafts and it'll be tough to stay in the league it's the kind of <laughs> the mindset that we have but um you know the league has just gotten so much quicker so much faster uh so much more skilled and then this is just the product of it these kids that are coming up now they're um they're just so talented and it's 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 awesome for the game i think the game is just going to continue to evolve i mean you see guys trying to do the michigan you see zegris i mean pulling moves that you're like wow how, how are they able to do this so um you know, it's all great for the game, in my opinion. I mean, it's growing the game. I hope it continues to grow, and that, that's the purpose. That's why we do it. Now, you have two young players who joined your team this year who are going to be big parts of Seattle's future, and that's Matt Beneers and, and Shane Wright. How would you describe them maybe as players and as people? And Because I'm sure you're helping get them comfortable at this next level. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I went through it. I was a young kid. I had guys mentor me. I think for them, I mean, they're both different. Um, Maddie is just kind of like a, I don't think he's ever had a bad day in his life. He's just, you know, happy go lucky all the time. Um, you know, and, and, and then where Shane's a little more serious and, and a little more professional in it, <laughs> which is great. Both are awesome. Um, they've been great for the room there. Uh, you know, they bring a little bit of spark and energy that you always need on a good teams. I think you need that little, that, that youth and that it, it brings that energy for the older guys and, and the passion that you see them play with. So um, as far as their games, I mean, they're, they're also different. Maddie's obviously skating. Uh, you see Ryder with his smarts. Um, they're both going to be just tremendous players and huge pieces for the crack and moving forward. So, um, you know, I just try to fit in where I can if they have questions or whatever it may be, whether it's, you know, how do I pay my room bill on the road or, you know, what, uh, you know, the rules, in the NHL, whatever it may be, you just try and fit in where you can. You know, it's funny you say that because I think there's a lot of people who don't understand sometimes that NHL players are humans too. Yeah. And they have questions about day-to-day -day life that we take for granted that they have to learn too. So take us back, Jordan, like what was the – the kind of the thing that when you broke in with the oil, maybe something you had to do that people take for granted that you were like, this is new to me. And I didn't recognize how it worked or realize how it worked. Well, I look back, I mean, I was a little, I mean, a year or two older than them, 20 years old, but yeah, it was the same thing. I mean, just from the time you get your letter that you're going to stay, I mean, it's a moment of just finding a place to live. Um, 
you know, getting your TV set up. I mean, you've never lived alone before and all of a sudden you're, you know, making money and you're, you know, you're, you're, you have to, you have utility bills and you have to do these things that you've never done in your entire life. So, and on top of that, you're starting your NHL career and playing games and you're going on the road. It, it's, it gets hard. So, um, you know, I always had, I had Sean Horkoff, I had Ryan Whitney, I had Alice Shemsky, I had guys like that who helped me out and, um, kind of showed me the ropes a bit. And then not only that stuff, but just, you know, how do you fit into a team? You know, you, you get on the bus and you stand up for the first time and you, you understand that, you know, the vets got to go first or the elevators, you know, there's certain things that you learn as you go, but, um, you know, it's it's important, and I'm sure they'll pass it down to the guys they play with. Was there ever a misstep you made where Whitney or Horkoff or Smith said, "Hey, Rook, like what what is that?" I think the best story I have is really not even my own. It's Taylor's Taylor Hall, and and I remember we were in Columbus one time, and there's two buses that usually leave after morning skate, and uh, he jumped on the second one, and and you know he thought no one was there, so he told the bus driver to leave, and he left Nikolai Habi Bullen at the rink and that didn't go over well. Obviously we played the game. I think he got to his uh, suit after the game and he had, Habi had cut the sleeves of his shirt off and had cut his tie and sewn his pockets together. And, and when he put on his suit, it looked normal because he had done it so perfectly when he did his button up, but yeah, he had messed with it quite a bit. But I remember that that was, that was a quick learning process. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you have you seen any of the rookies in the island or the Kraken where you've had to do anything like that and say, "Hey, man, like this is the way it works"? Uh, you know what? I I try to you know try and I'm not say you cut yeah, up yeah, anyone's yeah, yeah. suit. Yeah, yes. I try to stay uh, you know in good faith on both sides. But, but yeah, I yeah. mean, you, you definitely mention once in a while that hey, they're in line for their buffet quick. You're just like, <laughs> hey, you know, games played or whatever. We've, we've played a little longer than you to earn your right, but. Um, you know, it's all good fun. It's kind of like a, a rite of passage. I'm sure if you ask, it's any not guy, hazing. Anymore, no, no, it, it, it's more about a, a seniority thing. And, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, whether you got to wait for the elevator for two more minutes or you wait on the bus for two more minutes, it's just kind of a respect thing. Well, because one of my favorite players to watch is Matthew Barzell. And I heard that you in particular were very good <laughs> about keeping, uh, who's a confident young man, yeah. at least to us, uh, that you were very good about saying, Hey Matt, like this is the way things work. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's definitely one of my favorites. He's, uh, he came out as a young kid and, and he definitely comes across pretty confident. So he's a fun guy to knock down sometimes. And, and I'm sure he, he'd throw it right back at me too, which was fun. We had some good banter, but, um, yeah, he's, he's definitely a guy that I've grown fond with or grown close with over the years. And, um, a lot of it just has to do with, obviously we played together on line mates. Um, we had some success making it to a couple of conference finals and you, and, you, and you grow close to guys. And when you do that, you, you become comfortable. And <laughs> at a young age, he probably became a little too comfortable and got a little bit too high. So sometimes you got to knock him down a bit. How, how'd you do it? Uh, I'm honestly, I try to use my words, <laughs> my wittiness, uh, whatever that comes in, but he's pretty good himself. So we, we had some good, some good battles. Now, the, one of the things I saw, someone sent me the tweet and we'll put this out in the show notes so people can see it. But I guess he, there was a tweet of his from 2012 where he talked about how he loved watching you score the goal against Russia and you found it six years later and responded to it. Yeah, well, that was that was kind of my first like you're getting old a little bit moment in the <laughs> NHL. Um, is his first year? I think it would have been my seventh year in the NHL, and he had some. I don't know how it works. Some maybe it was Kimber, who's the uh, media guy at Edmonton. Kimber Auerbach. Yeah, or uh, I don't know who it was sent it to me, and I I saw it, it and it basically said something like. Uh, I still get goosebumps when I see that goal, and I'm like, God, this guy's my centerman, and now I'm playing. You know what I mean? So I. Uh, but yeah, I, I responded to it, and I, I still give him, you know, heck about it now because he he thinks he's pretty good. So it's it's fun to show him I was there first. <laughs> <laughs> That's spectacular stuff. Um, just Edmonton. When you go back, you know, basically, who have you kept in touch with, and and what are your favorite memories of your time there? Well, I mean, guys I've kept, still the guys I, I played with. I mean, I think there's only four of them now, and that's Nuge, Connor, Leon, and and uh, and Nursey, and um, you know, that, that team's changed a lot over the years. But for me, the, you know, I think like most guys coming to the NHL, you kind of hold a special place for the city that kind of gave you your head start in the NHL, and that's them. So, um, you know, I, I, from the people that I met in the city, from 
um, the people in the organization, you know, I just enjoyed being an Oiler. Plus I, I grew up an Oiler fan. So for mm-hmm. me, it was like getting drafted by them, um, getting to play my first seven seasons. There was like a dream come true. Um, you know, granted, we didn't really have the success that we would have wanted. It was nice to get to the playoffs in my last year. But, um, you know, I still, you know, love going back there. I still love playing that rink. I think uh, Oiler fans are, you know, one of the more passionate group fan bases that I've played in front of. Whether you're winning or losing, they're passionate both ways. But it, it, you want to play in a, in a fan base like that that cares about what you're doing. And mm-hmm. um, that's, I think, what I enjoyed the most. Um, they... Um you you mentioned happy go lucky about one one of your teammates Beniers. You were like that when you first started. Are you still that guy? Oh, for sure. I mean, I still love coming to the rink. Still love playing. Try and play as long as you can. I mean, this mm-hmm. is for me. It's not. It's never really been a job, which is um, what I've enjoyed most about it. I mean, you're always going to have ups and downs, and it's never going to be easy the whole way through. But um, I know when you sit back and you still think about, you know, I still get to play professional hockey for a career. It's it's been awesome. I mean, it's been as a, as a young kid, you come in and, and it's you know it's a dream come true. You're almost like you're in fantasy land playing against some of these guys like Crosby and Ovechkin, and um, and then as you get older, and for me now, I have two kids. Um, you know, for them to come watch me play, I think that that's the coolest thing that I have right now is that, you know, they're coming to warm ups and they don't really know what's going on. But I think as they get older, hopefully, they can share some of these memories with them. Will they play? Uh, it's up to them. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm a, I'm a strong believer. Just throw as many things at at them as I can, and and um, whatever they pick up and like, then we'll run with it, right? So, um, you know, I, I've gotten my daughter on on skates already. She loves mm. skating. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's I, I'm not gonna force them into anything. I'm just gonna, like I said, you know give them as many things as and, and open their eyes to as many whether it's sports music whatever um and then you know if you see what they what they like try and throw uh you know push them in that direction and see if they like it more than it and then go with it well we're going to get to music in a few minutes i'm not letting you get away without this <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a little nervous to be honest <laughs> do you do you still watch the oilers at all like do you watch the oilers or you watch the islanders like, I, I watch both i watch yeah. i just watch hockey yeah. i mean I, especially when you got guys on other teams like mm-hmm. obviously i know a lot of the islanders guys and I have friends and I want to see them do well and and same with the Oilers you know obviously it's it's tough to miss those games with Connor and Leon and Nuge and mm-hmm. um just a hockey fan in general I think I enjoy watching the game and and definitely if those guys are playing I'll, I'll turn it on you know it's it's been they've had so many good players over the last few years yourself included like it's been such a challenge there do you have any theories into why that is um that's a great question um you know, obviously, last year I was rooting for them. They they made it to the conference finals, but they came across Colorado. Obviously, it was a great team. Yeah. But, um, I I don't I don't really know. I mean, they've they've uh, they have a they always have a it seems to be they're there lately. I mean, with playoff wise, with them making the conference finals last year, I think they got bounced in the first, was it the first round of the year before that. Mm-hmm. So they're they're making progress, but. I don't really have, if I, I wish I had an answer or else we would have, I would probably still be there and we'd be making the playoffs every year. So, um, it's, it's, it's a good league. I mean, you can't, it's so hard to pick the NHL Stanley cup winner at the start of the year, because that's why the, in my opinion, the, the Stanley cup is such a hard trophy to win. Mm-hmm. Um, this league is so competitive. There's no easy nights and any team can win on any night. So, you know, when you see teams like Tampa Bay who have made it to three cup finals in a row, like to me, that is absolutely, it's, it, it's one of the most impressive things that in, in the four sports leagues in North America that's happened in the last, however many years, it's just, it, that is like, in my opinion, very hard to do. What was the, how did life change for you when you went from Edmonton to the Islanders? I mean, for me, it was Edmonton was the highs and lows were, you know, extreme. You yeah. Know, you, you got there and I was a kid and, you, you know, the highs were really high and the, the lows were extremely low. Um, I got to Long Island and, and the thing I liked about it most was it was just kind of a medium. It was a medium and it, it was an easier lifestyle for me. I got to wind down a bit. I got to, you know, enjoy the game. And then not only that, but I was being coached in, in my second, third and fourth year by Trots and, and had Lou Lamorello there. So I had to change my game a bit and learn how to, you know, do details of the game, be on the right side of pucks. And I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, it helped me grow as a player. I became more of a 200 foot player. Um, 
and and I you know bought into just trying to learn how to win instead of maybe at a young age I was trying to think about scoring and I thought I had to do that to to get there and then I learned a different style and and that's in my opinion why that team had success we just had a lot of guys buying in to playing a system that you know maybe isn't the most entertaining to watch but it got the job done and, and um you know, we, we, that's why we won. And, and, and it probably in the end of the day helped me and it, it'll hopefully help me, you know, you know, extend my career and the fact that I, I can play a 200 foot game now. So, um, it, it's, it, there's, you look at the road that you've taken in the NHL and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, you didn't expect that you'd be here and here you'd be doing this and this, but I, you know, I don't think you'd trade anything for it. You know, the thing I really remember, uh, Jordan, I think I can say the player's name now at the time, but it was Cal Clutterbuck. And I remember you guys lost to Varus. And uh, I know there's a bit of timeline there for you, but everybody thought the Islanders were done. That when Tavares left, it was going to be over for them. And I remember he said that when Barry Trotz and Lou Lamorello came in, he suddenly went from... I think I'm done here. That we're, I think that we're going to be done to, I think these guys really know what they're doing mm -hmm. and we're going to be okay. And he told me that the players went from thinking, oh my God, to this is actually going to work for us. What was that whole transformation like? Yeah, it was, it was tough because we went, the year before we went from one of the highest scoring teams and arguably the worst defensive team in the league to the next year we were like the lowest scoring team and the best defensive team but we went we went to the second round that year um you know i give barry and lou a lot of credit to how they changed the organization and, and the team so quickly but you know as far as the group i'm sure they'd say it, i'd give the guys a lot of group for buying into what they were you know what they were selling and we had a much older team um and they still do but we had a, a, a you know it's funny on that team i was sat in the middle of the bus and on the crack and i'm literally the oldest guy so <laughs> i mean that just goes to show that the veteran leadership that we had but um we all bought into the way we needed to play kind of i mean it's a, like it's kind of cliche but we checked our ego at the door i mean we didn't really care about how many points we had it was more about making wall plays, blocking shots, defending and, and coming. And, and that's honestly, in my opinion, one of the tightest knit groups I've played with because, you know, we all just were on the same page and that's probably why we had success. Ultimately we didn't get the job done. We came close two years, but, um, you know, that's a lot of that. I mean, Lou and, and Barry kind of put the foundation in place, but the players kind of gra grasped onto it and, and took it. Give me your best Lou Lamorello story. <laughs> oh, um, you know, he for he just kind of has a presence about him. Whether you watch, I mean, you could you could talk like you could go from you know the Godfather to John Dutton in Yellowstone. He just has this aura about him that he's just. I love that John yeah, Dutton. Yeah, he's just, it's just this respect factor, and and um, you know, for he, he obviously everyone knows him for his rules as far as keeping your your face clean and your haircut. But I don't think there'd be a thing that he wouldn't do for you. I mean. A great story for me and is that my daughter was born literally two days after the season ended and COVID had started and we were stuck in New York and we had had a home birth and we couldn't get a, we couldn't get a, um, a birth certificate so that we could get a passport to go home. So I've, after about a month and a half, we, I mean, we were like, we were stuck in New York. We we're like, we want to get back. And we, we didn't have any form of identification for it. And eventually I was like, okay, I'm just going to call Lou and ask him. And honestly, I called Lou and within a day I had like the governor of Washington call me <laughs> to get a, to get some identification for my daughter. So, I mean, it just goes to show you the loyalty that if you, um, go by his rules and, and, uh, you know, you're a good teammate, a good person that he'll, he'll do a lot for you. That's power, man. Yeah. That is power. <laughs> One, nothing game seven, Tampa. Of the games I've watched in the last few years, that's one of the best games I've ever seen. I Your face is narrowing. I know it's not a great <laughs> memory, but just the emotion of that series, that game, how close it was, just what, what it was like in the room after. I know it wasn't the result, but the effort that you yeah. guys gave was unbelievable. Well, yeah, I mean, that was one of the, that's the most devastated I've been in my career playing hockey. I mean, you come into the room and you got... 20 grown men crying it's it's you know we had we had come so close especially the year before we lost in game six um yeah I, I think it was kind of a funny series obviously Tampa Bay is a powerhouse we were um we we I think we lost like nine to one at in Tampa in game five 
And it's funny when that happens, you, you always come back the next game. I think I've been a part of like six of those and we've always won the next game. I don't know what it is, but we won game six, took it to game seven and, and anything can happen. And I think Tampa Bay didn't get enough credit for how well they defended. Um, you know, obviously everyone thinks of the guys that they can score, but when it came down, push, shove, push came to shove, how many shutouts did Vasilevsky have in clinching games? Like he had always stood strong, but in front of them, they had played so well. So, um, yeah, they scored shorthand in the second, and it was like the third period. It was just, it was honestly a blur. We were just trying so hard to get something at net, but we couldn't find anything. Um, yeah, that one hurt a lot, but I mean, obviously, I'm playing with Yanni Gord, who scored the goal in game seven, and he still gives it to me quite he a bit. He does. About that. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he's gracious about it, and I think he is because he has two Stanley Cups, and I don't have any, but. Um, yeah, it, those are always tough. Well, I'm sure every guy who's played long enough has stories like that where they've came close and didn't get there. So, uh, you know, obviously that's the end goal is you want to win the cup. I think that's the the only goal really I have left. <laughs> well, you, you've got the gold medals too. Aside from Barzell, how many young players have said to you, I remember that goal against Russia? How many? Yeah, lots. It's 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 always the the, the first thing that most guys say. Really? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, that must make you feel great and old. <laughs> old, yeah, both. <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny when you, at the time, I mean, you don't really have any thought of how big it was until you have kids who are coming up and talking about it 10, 15 years later, or even adults. So um, it's fond memory for me. Obviously, we went on, we went on to score, yeah. or sorry, to, to win the, uh, the gold medal. And um, like any kid, I'm sure most Canadians are the same. I grew up watching that tournament. I grew up... You know, thinking, planning my vacations around um, around the World Juniors, and I might for me it was like the Grand Forks team, the Jordan Tutus, the Double D. Like th that, that's what I remember as a kid. So I'm sure uh, you know many Canadians are the same, and and getting a chance to play in Canada, which was pretty special. I remember I was in the Maple Leaf dressing room because that was a Saturday night, and the players didn't want to do interviews after whoever they played because they were all watching the game, and the Canadians and the Russians and all the other players on the lease that weren't Canadian were hoping the Canadians were going to lose. And I just remember the reaction of the Canadian players when you scored that goal. <laughs> they were taunting the other the other guys. It was it was a huge goal. It's probably the same reaction I had the other night against Slovakia when I was, you know, I was like watching this game. I'm like, I feel nervous right now. Like this is, this is crazy, but that's what it brings out. Right. So it's, it's, uh, that's why you, you enjoy that tournament. It's just the passion, the pride and, and, um, and the fond memories as a young kid. What's the expansion experience been like in Seattle? Yeah, it's been, it, I mean, it's had its ups and downs. I mean, for me at the start, I was extremely disappointed. I was coming from a team who had gone back to back conference finals and we felt like we had a lot of unfinished business. Um, and then you find out you're going to be exposed and your world just shifts. You're like, holy, like this, this might happen. And then it does. Um, and you got to try and, I mean, you go to Seattle for the expansion draft. And you're on the private plane. Right? Yeah. Who else like, was on there with you? Uh, the guys that were there were Gio, Giordano, um, Fleury, I'm trying to think who else, Tanev, Alexiak, and Drieger. Yeah. And, I mean, you're there trying to put on a, 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 like a smiling face and act like you're excited. But really inside, I was I was rattled. I was pissed off. I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. Um you know, I'm glad I went there because I got to go see the facilities. I got to see the city. I got to meet some of the fans. And that kind of got me excited around what was about to happen. Um, and then, obviously, the season starts. It gets off to an okay start. And then last year was tough. It was, um, you know, you get into January and you're playing. You know, you're at the bottom of the league. That was, that was really hard when you're 31. And, um, you know, like I said, all you really care about is winning and trying to win a cup. Um you know, that, that's really hard. So this year has been just an absolute breath of fresh air. <laughs> We've added some huge pieces to our teams, uh, to our team. And for me, there's a little bit of similarities in the fact in the Islander team, this team, as far as we, we win by committee, I think our biggest strength is our depth and that's brought our team closer together. Um, and it's been it's been a good ride so far. So I mean, halfway through, hopefully we continue it. Is there? I remember when Vegas in their first year when they went to the Cup final, it was like we're the castaways, mm -hmm. and it didn't go that way for you last year. But you guys are definitely better. Is there that feeling? Like every time you go into a building, is there somebody saying this team left me unprotected, and I I got to do something here? Yeah, I, I would say it still motivates you a little bit. It motivates me at least when I'm playing the Islanders. You know, I. I want to, I want to show them that they, you know, try and show them they made a mistake. <laughs> um, but 
you know, it, you, do, you find little things, but I think at the end of the day, um, I think you consider yourself a Kraken now and, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to win and not really, you're trying to win for your teammates and, and trying to build something. And for me, it's kind of been enjoyable. The fact that, you know, hopefully you can build something from scratch, which is, you know, I don't, no one can really say that other than obviously the golden Knights that you, you literally were here year one. And if you can make the playoffs and make a push like that's special. So you try and make as much history as you can. Like I said, this league is so tight and the the line between winning and losing is so thin that, um, you know, who's to say that we don't have a chance, right? You just got to give yourself a chance in the playoffs and that's our goal. All right. So who is the player on the Kraken that you didn't know, but prior to that, you were like, this guy is an idiot. And now that I know <laughs> them, I actually think they're a pretty decent guy. I mean, Yanni Gord, for sure. <laughs> I hated playing against him. Um, I'm sure like many guys in the league, they can't stand playing against him. He plays hard. He plays in your face. He's a guy that you hate playing against and want on your team. I Does mean, he talk? Yeah. Yeah. He talks too. And I mean, he's definitely a guy you want on your team. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. Um, he's been, uh, obviously we have a lot of guys with one, two on our team, which I think has helped. I mean, you go through Gordy's got two, Schwartz has got one, Schultz has two, mm -hmm. Dunn has one, Grubauer has one, mm -hmm. one. Uh, Burakovsky has two. I mean, we have a lot of guys who have won, so that's helped a lot too. All right, I, I'm 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 getting this guitar. Almo, um, well, can you <laughs> let's grab let's grab the guitar. So this is my son. This is not a regulation guitar. This is my son Max's guitar. I brought it with because I was told. Um, so first of all, your wife and just what's your wife's name? Uh, my wife's name is Lauren. So Lauren is a music teacher, right? She is, yeah. And she taught you how to play. No, I taught myself how to play okay. a long time ago. Um, I'm not very good. I, I don't know where you're getting this information. <laughs> uh, I, 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 first of all, I heard. I think first off, I think this guitar is actually at a tune. Yeah, I, I have no it. doubt it's at a tune. My son <laughs> hasn't played it in a yeah. while. But I heard, for example, that you can play anything by the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> is that true? That is not true. <laughs> I can play one song by the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> okay. Um... This thing's way out of tune. I, I'm sorry. It's not no, perfect. It's... I apologize. But I was I heard about the guitar, and I was like, I have to bring a I prop. I think the guitar stuff started happening, and it wasn't just me. Um, when we were in the bubble. Um, I heard about was, this. There yes. was about eight or, no, probably six or seven of us. It was Clutterbuck, myself, Barzell, Lee, Boychuk. Uh, we all brought our guitars to the bubble because we were stuck there for so long. Mm -hmm. um, so we would just sit and play, and... Um, yeah, I don't even know if I can get this thing in tune. That's how. <laughs> <laughs> well, I apologize for that. Like I say, it's my son's guitar. He hasn't played it in a while. And so I, while. This might be a lost cause. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, I think this is deliberate sabotage on your I'm part. I'm telling you right way. now, I'm trying to do it. Well, while you're figuring this out, tell me about sticks and strings. <laughs> this could take a while. Honestly, I don't think I okay, can get all right, it. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm not sabotaging. Okay. <laughs> tell me about sticks and strings. Uh, sticks and strings is a foundation that my, well, I should say my wife and I, but she really took the reins on it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as you get older, you start, you know, thinking and looking back at, um, you know, how you can give back. And this game's obviously given me a lot. And uh, we just wanted to start a foundation that kind of was, you know, were things that we cared about. Obviously, myself, hockey, her music. So we kind of combined the two. So we started doing uh, this year will be the first banquet we're going to do in Calgary. And okay. we're going to just continue to try and raise as much money and then give, obviously, the money to foundations that we care about, whether it's getting kids into music, getting kids into um, into sports. So, um our daughter's three. She's already uh, playing hockey. She's she's skating. She's playing. We bought our ukulele for Christmas. So nice. those are kind of the two pillars that we have that we really enjoy doing. You are also, I remember one of the reasons you gave up your social media was because of your anti-bullying yep. uh, initiatives. And do you still do that? Yeah, I still work with TELUS. I think that was an awesome thing we did was it was called the code. And basically what it was was a code that for um, – you know, today's day and age, I, I'm a strong, like today, I never had to deal with this when I was a kid. Yeah. Social media can be an awesome, obviously an awesome tool to use for, you know, getting awareness out, charities, whatever it may be. But, um, you know, kids have to deal with the opposite side of it, whether it's, you know, bullying or. Uh, do you see it among players? Like, do you see players who get really affected by it? I mean, honestly, 
a big reason why I don't have social media is because of that reason. I mean, mm -hmm. I was in Edmonton. You look at your feed after, and you're like, geez, like, do I really? And, and I mean, you're a big boy. You can handle it. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you found yourself, you know, dwelling on it. And I was like, do I, do I need this? And I, I was just like, no. So I got, I mean, I still have Twitter. I honestly, I don't know my account login. So, <laughs> which is a good thing because I never go on it. Um, but you know, I, when I got to do this thing with TELUS, as far as coming up with a code and, and, um, you know, basically raising awareness to what is going on and understanding that, you know, this, this is not the right hockey should be a thing that you get into to make friends, to have fun. Um, cause you know, the percentage of kids that actually get to go play pro is is ridiculous. It's like 0.3%, 0.03%. So, mm -hmm. I mean, hockey is, a, for me, it's, I enjoyed playing as a kid because I love to. I, uh, I'm i sure like most people, I had I made friends, I, and that's how I got into it. So, um, yeah, and, and this is such a new concept to me as far as social media because I didn't have to deal with this, but these kids now have to deal with it. My kids are going to have to deal with it. So, um, you know, I just thought when they came up with the initiative, I was right on board because I thought it was a great idea. Is there any player you've ever had to say to you, hey, I turned that off, it's time for you to do it too? <laughs> um not really. Um, like as far as turn it's Twitter off or social media off. No yeah. one's no one's told me to do that. I mean, it's funny now. We, I mean, these kids all have Instagram. They have Snapchat. They have. Twitter. I was more wondering about your teammates, like because yeah. they read it too much or anything like that. I don't know. I I just kind of, I you know they they do that them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, I'm not going to tell someone to get rid of social media. I can tell you, I'm honestly a lot happier since I've stopped using it, mm -hmm. um, just because it's. For me, I just felt like I'd look at it, you know, whether it was positive or negative, whether you're getting too high or too low. It was just, I don't, I don't need this. So um, maybe one day when I'm done playing, I'll get back on it and I'll be one of those, you know, uh, computer warriors or whatever they call them. And I'll get, you know, I'll get on kids, but <laughs> I'll get on the XFA, I'll get on the new players and tell them that they're not as good as us. But um uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, we used to, I remember one time we were in Oklahoma and, uh, we were, we were there for the lockout and I remember yeah. the, the Thunder who were absolute unbelievable team at the time. Uh, they didn't play very well. And I remember Halsey turned to me and said, I'm going to get on Twitter right now and tell every guy on the team how much they sucked. And it just made me <laughs> laugh, you know, like, cause that's exactly what we had dealt with. So, uh, it, it, uh, you know, you, you, that stuff makes you laugh, but at the end of the day, I, I just, I've honestly been just a lot happier without it. I understand. Um, uh, are you better at cribbage or golf? Oh, Probably cribbage. I, I play a lot of crib. I heard you're really good. Yeah, I play a lot of crib. I, that was like my grandma's game when I was a kid. So, I and I don't think I've ever beaten her. So it's really no. She's. I'm sure. I'm sure every guy's this story. They've <laughs> never beat their grandparents in cribbage. But yeah, we play a lot on the road. Uh, well, at least we did in the aisle. We don't play really a lot here. But who was good? Uh, Bar. I will say Barzi was pretty good. Um, it's funny you play so much now where you just look at the cards. You don't even have to count anymore. It's just like, oh, that's a that's a sixteen. That's a twelve. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, who's the worst cribbage player that thinks they're a good cribbage player? <laughs> Ryan Pulak. That one's <laughs> easy. Yeah. <laughs> he. Uh, yeah, he wasn't very good. He lost a lot of money. <laughs> and same question: Who's a good golfer and who thinks they're a good golfer but really isn't? So this team, we have a lot of good golfers. Justin Schultz, Martin Jones, some of the one of the two best golfers i've ever seen in hockey um really? and, and then you have Jaden schwartz who thinks he's a good golfer and he's not so um but yeah we seattle's been nice for that reason yeah. as we get a chance to play once in a while and and uh, we have a lot of guys who really enjoy playing um who's a better uh, guitar player you or brett kissel oh definitely brett yeah i saw brett last night actually he came to the game so yeah. we chatted after the game but yeah he's de he's definitely up there <laughs> because you guys do a lot of stuff together you guys are pretty tight you're godparents of each other's kids is that the way it works no oh, well, we are how it worked is when we were in edmonton um he's obviously an Oilers fan mm -hmm. and uh when he i i it was for me it's been fun because when he started he wasn't brett kissel yes. he was um he was kind of just starting i think he had maybe was just about to write like three two one and started with the song and um uh, for me it's been awesome to watch because he's grown into you know what he is now and he's he's one of the more hard-working guys i've seen i mean we talk about hockey players working out and 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 playing hockey but i've never seen someone work like this hard whether it's social media doing events playing concerts so that's been neat for me to watch and watch him grow um 
our wives hit it off when we were younger and you know obviously they get close we become close that's just kind of how it works so um yeah it's and then he's had kids i've had kids we've just become close and we both enjoy hunting we both enjoy golfing we both enjoy guitar we both enjoy we just have a lot of things in common so um as I've started to play, he's helped me in that aspect. I've helped him not so much in hockey because he plays a little bit, but I've helped him in golf, we'll say, and we both love crib. We've, we've just done a lot together. So we've, uh, it's been fun for me just to watch his road get to where he is. He's an incredible talent. Like yeah. he, he, and he loves hockey. You can, yeah. he probably loves hockey more than some of the players. He, too. yeah, he, he definitely does. He's a very passionate other fan. He came to the game last day, he texted me before, and he said, I hope you get a hat trick, but you lose 4-3 in overtime. We'll give you one point. And I was like, I don't even think I'd take that. So <laughs> we need these two points. But he's uh, – yeah, he, he's a very passionate hockey fan. A uh, couple more. Since the guitar isn't going to work, yeah. w- what is the one Backstreet Boys song you can play? That w- It's honestly like the first song I learned, and it was uh, I Want It That Away. <laughs> yeah, that one uh, – yeah, I – Actually, I think Brett was one who taught me that one too. So, um, do you ever play it anymore? I do. Yeah, my daughter will run around singing to it too. <laughs> so she's uh, now that I have a daughter, she we bought her ukulele for Christmas. Yeah. She pretends like she's playing, and we play and sing together. So that's been enjoyable. What is your best song? Like, if if you could, if you had to play one song, what is your best? <sighs> that's a tough question. Um, that one might be up there just because I, I'm obviously not a great singer. <laughs> that goes without saying. Um, so I like playing songs that people sing for me so I don't have to. And that would definitely be one up there. Okay. I want the chorus of the Islander song. Explain to me the <laughs> genesis of this song. Explain this song. Uh, the, the So we were in Washington and uh, me, Barzell, and Lee were just hanging out in the room. And we decided to write a song. So we wrote a song about uh, the Islanders at the time. And then it obviously, I think that season ended and we ended up going into the bubble. And that just, <laughs> I showed it to the guys and they all loved it. And we just, we went through uh, each teammate, made a thing. And I think the chorus was something along like, we're the boys of the aisle. We don't play a pretty style and it ain't that much fun, but it gets the job done. <laughs> play it. Play it. I know you keep it on your phone. Play it. Uh, we, uh, give us a little snippet. The, the fans are, are, are going to die, are going to be dying to hear this. Uh, this is uh you're really putting me on the spot here. <laughs> I didn't I didn't expect any of this. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was hockey related. <laughs> I figured World Juniors. <laughs> Put it and keep way. keep in mind I'm not a great singer. So this is it. <laughs> you know what? That's fantastic. You know what? It was it was a lot of fun. Obviously, we're we're hockey players. We're not creative minds. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Barzell and, and Lizzy helped me write, and we went through most of the. I think pretty much every guy on the team and said something about it. It was um, honestly that's like I said, it's one of the tightest knit groups I've mm-hmm. played with. So it was um, we were all just you know in the moment. We get a lot of time in our room, so we're <laughs> trying to figure out ways to, to to kill time. You know, Anthony Stewart has a line that his dad told him, are you a team or are you a club? Yeah. Like, I hear that, and the Islanders were a team. Like, yeah. that was a team. Yeah, we were we were just a close-knit group. Obviously, we were like any team we gave each other. We, 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 we were harder on each other, but it was all in good fun, right? So, um, and, the, the, and I think anytime you're with a group and you have success, you gain relationships too, right? So, um, that's why that, in my opinion, that team had had successes because we were so close. Last one for you. You've seen a lot in, in, in your career. And I, I always ask this to guys, um, you've got a lot left on your tires, but have you thought about, you know, how much longer you want to play or, or anything like that? Yeah. I, th- I mean, it always goes through your head, right? You're, you're, I'm 32 now and I got a year left in my contract. I hope to sign another one. And I honestly, I just, I love being in the locker room, um, I think that's the best part of, for me, that's being in hot, like you talk to any guy who's done playing, that's all they talk about is they don't miss the games. They don't miss, they don't even remember goals or games. They just miss hanging out with the guys. I was joking with my wife the other day. She asked me what I'd do. I was like, I'd love to just be like a fireman and hang out in the hall. I don't want to actually do anything. I just want to <laughs> hang out with the guys in the hall and, and cook them dinner when they come home. So 
<laughs> you know, I was, it, that's just what I love about hockey. It's the best part, hanging out in the locker room, hanging out uh, on the bus, hanging out on the plane. So I'm going to obviously try to play as long as I can. And, and But the ultimate goal for me is to win. I, I want to win a Stanley Cup. I'm sure, like most guys, that's 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 what they – I mean, that's what they dream about doing. So that's really the only, on the, the only thing on my mind. Jordan, it's been great. Thank you so much. Yeah, eh? no I'm sorry. I'm happening. sorry. I pulled that one out <laughs> on you, but I think I'm trying to. I want to figure out who these rats are. They're getting all this information. There's no chance. <laughs> I'm telling you who that is. But I guarantee you, the thing people are going to remember most about the interview is that, and the Islander fans, they're going to love it. <laughs> With the, the plan was that we were going to win and then be able to have show them this song, but it ended up happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you. No, I appreciate. It. Thanks. Oh, Jordan, thanks so much. And I swear I actually couldn't get in. No, I, I, it's, it's, it's better for a laugh to say that you... You know what I was worried much. about, honestly, was I was trying to fix the top string. Mm -hmm. And it might, I don't know if it was my thing or the string, but I was like, this thing's getting really tight. Oh. It's not working. I'm like, I'm going to break this. You know what? If you would have broken, I just would have gotten a new string. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't have like tweeted that Jordan broke my son's guitar. I was like, I can't anymore. break his son's guitar here <laughs> on camera. Five seconds of sound. Sure. Yeah. It was Barzy for sure that told you that, didn't it? I would never tell it, it has to. It's the only way. You know, Lamarillo.